What's up guys? Today we're playing Epic 7 and this one is all about Dark Expedition. This was the very first boss I was able to auto and really get a decent score to make sure we're getting these rewards. It's really not as hard as it sounds. So today we're going to go over what kind of heroes you need, what kind of team that you can set up, and then we're going to go in and see what this dark boss is all about. So let's get started. Expeditions have come a long way since they first launched. When the expedition first came out, you had to have very strong friends who were active, and that way you could destroy the boss and get the rewards. Now with open recruitment, players from all over the server can band together to, to kill all the bosses and make sure that we are getting the most out of the game as we can. It has made it so very simple to go in and get the rewards. So let's talk about the rewards that we can get. Each one of the bosses will give you a different kind of reward for reforging your uh, gear that you get, you know, through your hunts. The Brutal Ferris, this guy is the uh, fire boss, and he gives you the Wyvern. Blooming Snag Lich, he's the earth boss, and he gives you Golem. And then we have Gigantes, Destructive Giant here, and he's going to give you Azamanic. You can also buy the Premium Pass for 1500 and I always do. This is going to give you even more materials and it's going to give you even more of your chest so that you can go in and get a lot of gear that's going to be very in game i personally i don't buy epic passes but consider it like this it cost me 1500 to buy the the premium pass here and the expedition it cost 900 to go get what i would consider less rewards in the epic pass than you would get right here and you basically get it every single month this is going to help you progress it's going to help you get gear and it's going to help you to build a lot of amazing amazing items that you can use to advance and have fun in epic 7 because that's what it's all about that's why we're here and this every single month gives you that opportunity to advance and we have to take advantage of it the Dark Boss does not have a ton of mechanics to worry about. The first one is, he is immune to poison, you can't decrease his combat readiness, and of course Daydream Joker is not going to work. The second thing is that if you bring a light elemental hero, he will do much more damage and wreck you. I'm going to bring a light hero so it's not that bad, but make sure that you do not bring a light tank to this because it's not going to end well. And the only mechanic you really have to worry about is this thing called Electrocute. When he does an S3, he's going to apply this debuff to all of your heroes. And you must do a non-scale attack in order to remove it. Or it does damage to everyone. What I found is that you could get by with one non-scale attack like Tamarim. But for a good solid auto run, you want to bring two heroes with non-scale attacks. And you want to make sure they use those non skill attacks after the boss takes his first turn. And we're going to talk about that when we go into our heroes. The very first hero we're going to talk about today is our knight. You must bring a knight because he does extra damage to the front row if you don't. And I'm going to use Cecilia. She uses an S3 on her first turn, which means that you can build her fast with high effectiveness and you're going to be able to apply those debuffs. She also brings a slow and an attack down, which will help you survive. And she brings a two turn defense break. It's a low percent, but two turn defense break is pretty good. Overall, it's going to be a really great kit for you. I use her imprint to give everyone defense, and that also helps with survivability. You only need to have 85% effectiveness She's literally on leftover gear that no one else is using, kind of that no one else wants. So you can definitely pull her with any kind of gear that you have. I'm using the number two exclusive equipment because this will enable you to decrease speed. You're able to cycle and you can do more turns. Now, for a long time, I used Falcon or Clary. The problem with her is that she does an S3 on her first turn to decrease defense. So you want to make sure that you're running her at 85 effectiveness, but also do not put her onto speed boots 
and keep her at about 170 to 175 speed. That way she goes after the boss first turn to do her non-skill attack. She does help cycle and she helps heal. So she's a really awesome tank for this, but she doesn't bring the slow and I have to run her slow, which means I can't really use her in anything else. Another alternative is to bring good old Fire Lilius. She's around here somewhere. She does an S3 at the start and then an S2 on her next turn and this will remove the electrocute. So she's another great hero. Just like Cecilia, you can run her fast, but really I don't have her built because I don't use her for anything. Next up is our best girl Tamarin. What's not to say about her? She gives you combat readiness, she gives you attack buff, she removes your debuffs, and she brings on a dual attack which will help you do more damage. You can pretty much run her as fast as you want, make sure that she has enough survivability to last, and then make sure she has effectiveness at 85% or more. That way you can remove the uh, defense buff on the boss. Clurry would often do that as well, except that I'm not using her for this battle. So you want to make sure you bring someone, anyone, who can remove the buff, and that will help you do more damage. The artifact basically does not matter. I use the Rod of Amaryllis just to make sure that I don't die. But if you find that you can live through this battle, then go ahead and use any artifact that'll help you do more damage or help you cycle faster like Idol's Cheer or something like that. You can basically use this hero on every expedition really and every abyss stage. She's amazing. PVE, you can't really use her anywhere in PVP like an arena or RTA, but fantastic for doing all your achievements and your abyss stages. Next up, we have Camilla who is a light hero, but I didn't have problems with her dying. She brings a speed imprint once you get to SSS, and this will help you cycle just a little bit, but it's something added to really help your team function. Now what she does on her S2 is she brings that second non-skill attack after Tamarin. So she will remove the electrocute and help you with that survivability. She also gives attack buff. So Tamarin does take a few turns to get rolling, and she will provide this attack buff uh, in the meantime, in between the boss fight starting and Tamarin getting started with her cycling. What she also does is she brings along the hero with the highest attack for a dual attack chance, which is going to be a fantastic way for you to increase a lot of damage that you're doing in the game. This will work in Katie's, it works in Hall of Trials, it will work in this boss as well. She has a 50% chance to land a two turn defense break. And because she's cycling fairly quickly, this happens a lot. I had tried this multiple times. The defense break, you know, sometimes isn't there, but I'm always getting to a million damage on this team because they're doing such a fantastic job cycling. And because they have two two turn defense breaks, even if one doesn't land, the next one is good for a while. You, all you have to do on her is run her at 175 or less speed, try and get to 85 effectiveness, and then everything else can go into damage. You can definitely do more damage than I'm doing here if you give her a lot better gear. This is basically leftover gear to demonstrate how uh, you can utilize her in a lot of different content. Now, if you don't want to run Camilla, you can run Green Azaria. She brings as well a non-scale attack. You just want to make sure that she goes after the boss or that you auto the first turn. That way you don't waste her defense break uh, or bring someone else who can defense break in her place. For a long time, a lot of people are using Cerise as well. Cerise does not have a non-scale attack, but she brings slow. She brings defense uh, break if you put her on the right artifacts and she can help you cycle. So that is another good alternative to Camilla if you don't have her or you just simply don't want to build her. And last up is our damage dealer. And I'm using Landy for this. Landy is amazing and a ton of content and she's going to do a great job in this as well. I did try other uh, DPSers 
La, uh, Lorena, the SC Lorena. She's a dark warrior. She works out pretty well. I also used Fire Sermia, and she worked out pretty well. I also used Green Sid, and he works out well when you put him on Dust Devil. It's much less important to stack up the right kind of DPS as it is to get good stats on them. Now, here's the reason why Landy works really well. The first thing is she grants speed buff. So we have speed decrease and we have speed buff, which is really great for helping you cycle. She gives you combat readiness 15% to the whole team. Also really fantastic. And then she gives herself combat readiness plus 15 when she gets that, uh, that S1. So this will work not only on her turn, but it works when you bring her along as a dual attack. So we have Camilla who's doing dual attacks and that's bringing her along more combat readiness. Then we also have Tamarin who's bringing her along more combat readiness. I have her on Rosa and I've pretty much left her on this to be honest because I use her in a lot of content and this worked out really, really well. It gives you the 14% dual attack chance which gives you 17% total, but it increases 30% of your attack when you get that dual attack chance. So because we're bringing along so much dual attacking, she's just doing a ton of damage. Stack her up onto damage gear. She doesn't need effectiveness or effect resist. Put her at 175 or less speed. If you want to perfectly tune her, then put her at about 10 or 11 speed less than Camilla. That way, she's always going to have your defense or your attack buff, and she's going to be able to go on that next turn to do much more damage with your attack buff, right? I have her on a rage set, which is really great. I tried her on a lot of different builds, and you still do great damage. But if you want to get over a million consistency, then I think that this rage set is a must. When I use Sid, I didn't use Rage Set and he was still doing a million. So you can kind of pick and choose which hero you want to bring here. But I think a lot of heroes will fit. This is just my chosen path. And I use her for a lot of content on this Rage Set. So it's a perfect fit. You'll be destroyed. Lance of Steel. Requesting approval. And granted. Removing restrictions. Charge! An opening. Got Over. Ladies and gentlemen, let's shine! <laughs> Do not fear. You 
my secret weapon. Respect the great land! Uh, hello? Under fire! Drive them out! Got it. Over! You'll be destroyed. Grant me the strength to destroy evil. Uh, together! Under and fire! Full frontal assault! That's in order! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's shine! An opening! Got it. Over! As you can see from a lot of our damage, we are just doing so much that we don't need a ton of damage from anyone else and we get the rewards that we want. I did all of these literally back to back to back and it's a million every single time that we've run this type of auto team. And I like that it's one touch and then you don't have to worry about it, right? We're after these reforged materials. This is going to help us to get better gear, to do more damage, to get into more content, and then to have fun in Epic 7. But, man, how easy it is it, right? How easy is it to go in, to build your team, and then do fantastic? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video makes it a little easier for you to break into your Dark Expedition, get those rewards, and have fun playing Epic 7. Until next time, Happy hunting and good luck on your battles.